morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Africa. Hello, everyone. You're welcome to Tea or Coffee on High Impact TV, your number one first full HD television in Nigeria. We're so proud anytime, any day to let you know about that. Of course, my name is Bora Olapopola, and here with me in the studio, I have... Ronke Ashiru. So how was your weekend? Yeah, very fine. Good morning, everyone, and welcome, like she, she rightly said, Tea or Coffee. This where you learn a lot and because this program is created for you so that you can be better as the payoff you get motivated in the future. inspired yeah, exactly so how are you this morning i'm fine it's a corporate kind of monday yes. as I can see. <laughs> of course it is yes and how All was... we need to do is swap oh We're that's black. true you're waiting <laughs> <laughs> we just need to exchange our jackets, you exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> and you look beautiful. You I love your hair. Thank you. Yeah. How was your weekend? Ah, weekend. My weekend was good. I had, mm -hmm. you know, I was waiting to share this encounter with okay, you. Okay, please do. I said, no, I have to share this encounter with you. Okay, so I was driving. <laughs> it's very funny. So I was driving mm -hmm. along um, the expressway and a car just came from behind and hit me. So I, <laughs> I didn't even know what to do at that point in time. So I, I think the normal reaction the driver expected was that I, I would come down and, and you start fighting start or shouting or arguing or all of that. But I just came down. I was not looking at him. I looked at the car that was crashed. I looked at the driver. Was it a dent or just? It was a dent. Wow. And I, I looked at, I, I looked at him. I looked at the, at the what what happened to the car. All I just did, I just smiled. I said it is well, and I entered the car. And I was going. Really? Do you know? <laughs> do you know what happened? Uh -huh. I think <laughs> he got scared that this one, that this woman didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. So next thing, he blocked me in front, and when he came to the front, he was not like. So he, I parked. I was like, ah, okay, you hit me. I did not say anything, and then you're still mm -hmm. blocking me again. What happened? What's the problem? And then he came down like, I'm very sorry, ma. I, it wasn't intentional because oh. for you to keep quiet and enter your car without saying anything, I'm so sorry. I was oh. like, oh, I, I, if Nigeria, nice. if it could continue like this, if everyone could probably act like that, I'm sure he had guilty conscience. Ah, yeah. This woman, and she didn't say anything, she just drove off. Yeah. It was, the expected reaction is not what I gave, but it's fine. I just, in no time, I Why? got over it. Why were you able to walk away? Is your car insured? No, yeah, it is insured. And funny enough, we're talking about insurance. insurance. <laughs> okay, our car is yeah. insured. That's why she could walk away like yes, that. Yes, exactly. So today we're talking about insurance and all you need to know. We have okay. a guest in the house. So sit back, relax, get your cup of tea or coffee. When you think about it, there's a lot to celebrate in our lives. From the smallest milestones to our biggest moments. We'll pamper you at High Impact Planet. Whatever the occasion, let's celebrate you at High Impact Planet, where fun just got real. And we're back. This is still tea or coffee. And today we'll be talking about insurance. All you need to know about insurance. And with me, with us here, we have the agency manager, Axa Mansad, Mr. Daniel Owo. Is it Owo? Owo? Owo. It's Owo. You're beginning to use the phonetic. No, it's Owo. Owo. Well, it's actually pronounced Owo in my local dialect but oh, but oh, it's oh, fine oh, 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 oh yes oh, oh, yes yes okay. where's that that's uh, Makwaibo wow I've already I turned it to Yoruba you've turned it to Yoruba so that's <laughs> oh, why oh, that's <laughs> a lot of people money. get the pronunciations um pronunciation wrong but but it's fine now for, for today I'll let that pass okay. Okay. All right. okay so welcome thank you welcome, so much for having welcome. me thank you all right before let's start from the basics a lot of people the want to know especially in this part of the country when people hear insurance or when you say i work in an insurance company they look at you <laughs> with side eye so what is insurance 
Well, um, insurance basically is a risk transfer mechanism where um, an individual or a company comes to an insurance company and says, I have this risk I, I want to put on you. Um, and you're asked to pay an amount which is called a premium. Okay. So it's transferring risks from point A to point B just to um, advert um, loss occurrences in the future. So it's, it's, it's actually started early years uh, where traders um, came together to say, we're always losing our goods to fire or to flood or something. So what do we do? So they started putting out money together in a, together in, in one point to say, whenever a member of this community has an issue, we'll take out of that savings or whatever it is to help um, uh, take care of the issue. So that's basically how um, insurance started. So it's a, it's a transfer, risk transfer mechanism from point A to point um, B, basically. Okay, you said that people came together, the traders themselves. Yes, so that's, that's the very early days of insurance. Early days. You know, so that's the history of how uh, insurance started before it became um, a company issuing out a policy. You know, so when you make a payment to an insurance company to cover a risk, you are given an insurance policy, which is um, a binding document to say if um, something occurs, a loss occurs, um, the insurance company will be willing and ready to indemnify. They will be willing to reinstate you to the point where you were before the loss occurred. So it's just a simple principle of have, um, so for example, you have a car mm -hmm. and you purchased your car at five million. And um, there are certain things that may occur. So for example, there may be fire that would damage the car. There may be an issue of theft. There may be an accidental, uh, accidental damage. Um, and at the time such loss may occur, you may not be disposed in terms of finances to be able to take care of that um, issue. So you go to an insurance company and say, I'm transferring all the risks that are associated with this asset to you, and I'll pay an amount which is called a premium. And you'll give me a promissory note to say, whenever there is an issue, there's a loss, you would put me back where I was without any issues. Okay. So that's basics of insurance, if you would ask me. Okay, before now, when you mention insurance people, and you're like, okay, why don't you do an insurance for your car, do you have insurance for your life? Next thing you hear is, are you wishing me bad? <laughs> do you want me to die? Exactly. But now you find people taking insurance as an important factor in their lives. What has changed over time? Okay, so um, insurance is not new in the world. It's just that um, in Nigeria, it's, a, it's actually a growing um, industry. We haven't even scratched. So um, from statistics, um, insurance penetration in terms of GDP is less than 0.4% oh of our GDP. So you see that there's still a lot of opportunities. Um, in terms of population, it's just about 1% and a little over. Mm -hmm. you know? okay. So we have not even um, scratched the surface of insurance. So what has been ampered the growth of insurance all the while is, um, first and foremost, is awareness. Mm -hmm. People proud to this time, even up to now, quite a number of people do not know what an insurance policy is and the benefit and the essence of taking an insurance policy. So I would say number one um, is awareness. Mm -hmm. um, number two is, we will say, uh, because we're in a country that is, we tend to go um, through the path of religion Region is also one of the problems of insurance in Nigeria. Yeah. So, I mean, a Christian um, person will tell you, or a Muslim, a Christian person will tell you that, ah, I mean, God is my insurer. Why should I insure? I'm just dashing out money and nothing happens. You know, so religion has also ampered the growth of um, the development of insurance in Nigeria, um, um, basically. Then also, uh, I will say that there's been issues of trust. Proud to now, um, before the new companies came on board, We've had issues, history in Nigeria, where people have, our parents have um, given premiums to insurance companies, and at the end of the tunnel, where yes. they needed to get yeah. indemnification, mm -hmm. stories arise. You know, so people did not believe that. I mean, quite a number of people, even up till today, would believe that insurance is a scam. Yes. yes. You know, so there's been the issue, there's been broken trust. So what we're doing now in the industry is we're trying to... Um, get people up to speed to say there are reputable insurance companies now that would um, indemnify if a loss occurs. All right. Okay. Do we, if you ask a lot of people, they talk about life insurance, auto insurance, and um, health insurance. Are there other 
types of insurance? So, um, I mean, for Nigeria, broadly um, uh, categorizing in the insurance policy, so you have the general insurance and the life insurance, which are the two broad categories of um, okay. insurance in um, Nigeria. There's also the health insurance and other other forms of insurance, the savings and all of that. But uh, I mean, the, it's categorized basically as life and um, general business. So um, for a life insurance, you have an individual life policy. You have a corporate life policy, which is the group life insurance. You have um, 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 you know, mortgage protection and quite a number of life insurance policies that you can take uh, as an individual or, um, or corporate body. Then on the general part of insurance, which is what you all know as the motor insurance, mm -hmm. you have the motor insurance, you have the building insurance, you have, um, you have the travel insurance, you have quite a number of, uh, but, but what is most popular in Nigeria is the motor insurance because mm -hmm. by law, I ask you. yeah, <laughs> I, I mean on our way, yeah, we were, we were stopped by one of the law enforcement agencies exactly. and the first question they asked is for our insurance. Mm -hmm. you know, so by law, you should, shouldn't drive, put a car on Nigerian roads without, at the minimum, a third yes. party insurance. Yes. You know, so that's what is most popular for. But insurance is broad. You can take insurance on your assets, your, even as little as your mobile phones, you can take insurance on your jewelries yeah. and all of that. So and even some people, they take insurance on part of their body. <laughs> well, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's happened. If we do well, we're not here. doing part right now in Nigeria. We don't do we don't do part and part insurance in, with insurance. the body. So we, <laughs> for my brain, we, for my eyes. we insure <laughs> life. So our life insurance works is you come to an insurance company and say, "I want to, I want to insure my life." Okay. And you know, unlike the other policies, we will mm -hmm. tell you. Give us a value. If you bring a car yes. and you you bring a value that is not proportional to the prevailing market value, we will tell you that no, is either you've underinsured or overinsured. But when it comes to life insurance, yes. there's no price to life. Okay. So the law allows you to take as much as 20 life insurance policies with different insurance companies in Nigeria. Mm. Yes, because there's no value to life. So if you tell us you want a one billion naira cover over your life, if you die. Um, your stated beneficiaries will be paid one billion naira. As long as you can pay the premiums, you'll be covered as such. So you are covered for debts, not parts of the. There are other insurance policies that would cover for um, a broken arm. Um, those are disability mm -hmm. covers, disability. Uh, you know. So a broken arm, a broken limb, um, a broken leg, or a broken head, or something, you know. You can have such policies, but they're all related to accidents and work-related activities. Okay, so what, what, what are the key points and benefits people have to take note of having an insurance? Okay, the first and, first, first and foremost is that it gives you peace of mind. That's, 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 that's paramount. Especially in an economy where we are, where um, there's so much uncertainty. It gives you peace of mind. You are, you are not going to lose your life because of an asset. So, for example, you are um, an unfortunate incident happens on the road and you you get it by another car, you know, and less of all the exchange of punches and grammar mm -hmm. on the roads of Nigeria. Exactly what happens. <laughs> <laughs> all you need to do is just exchange insurance policies. So if somebody eats my car, I will step out of the car and look at the damage and meet the person. If he's responsible, mm -hmm. all I need to do is, do you have an insurance policy? Mm -hmm. We exchange our insurance policy. I take his insurance policy. I take it to my insurer. And they will go after the insurer for the third party that ate my car, you know. But whilst the, that, all of that process is going on at, at the back end, I mean, they will reinstate my car, they will fix my car. So it gives you peace of mind. You don't have to, if somebody, if I'm robbers are cost you on, the, uh, I mean, uh, on the highway or something, <laughs> you're not going to you, you, uh, um, rush and try to save an asset. You just ensure that your life is safe, yes. which is critical. Yeah. So, for example, um, uh, the fire incidents that happened, I mean, quite a number of those cars were insured. Mm -hmm. You know, so in a situation like that, you don't need to bother about your assets. Your life is most important. So it gives you peace of mind that at the end of the day, I will get um, reinstated to where I was before the loss um, occurred. Also for, for families, I mean, it gives you, so there's education insurance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still an extension of peace of mind, but it helps also to 
to put things in order, even if the, uh, the breadwinner is not available. Uh, maybe it's because of demise or something. You know, you can take an insurance for your children's education, and um, um, that will be taken care of if the unfortunate, I mean, occurs. And for life insurance also, you have some money. Um, like I always joke around with my friends and say that, look, um, if your husband dies and he has a life insurance policy of 500 million, uh, you are going to cry you, for you the loss. But look, <laughs> come on, you are going to cry with some swag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, uh, one of my friends that he said that if he dies today, that was maybe last year or two years ago, that his family, his wife is going to get 200 and something thousand dollars. So that, and that was a year ago that he keeps building every month. And I thought of it, is that not the reason why a lot of people try to kill their spouse? <laughs> no, you know, the, actually, things like that happen. No, they, sure, it does. They try it to does. Kill their when when in Africa, do. people would do. Um, people don't even need to see insurance policies before they kill their parents. <laughs> yes. So I mean, they do all of that for rituals yes. and all of that. So um, it Maybe happens. Maybe that you, is why in this part of the world we are, you know, we think twice before we do that. And do some people such, actually yeah. do, but they wouldn't tell them. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so I've had to interact with quite a number of people who have life insurance policies without um, letting their spouses know. Mm -hmm. Some go ahead to let their spouse know every step along the way. Mm -hmm. Because um, it's, um, it may be, it may be, it may be um, a good idea for the individual to put it away from the spouse at this point. Um, but at the end of the day, it may not really be that a fanta it may not be a fantastic idea because if the spouse does not know you have a life insurance policy, and the person dies, the other um, spouse dies, how would he or she go to claim the insurance money? All right, so that means they wouldn't come. So really? that's that's also <laughs> not too good to 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 do, you know. Right. So it's just knowing who your spouse is and creating the right balance. Okay, what I've noticed and especially some of the comments that people made on the social media. For ex let's paint a scenario. I'm collecting 60000 per month, and I was told to come and do health insurance where I'll be dropping 20000 Out of 60000 Out of 60000 Education insurance is there. Life insurance is there. At the end of the day, what do I have left? Is there a way that you measure the amounts to collect from an, a certain individual through the salary um, that the person is getting? Okay, so for buying insurance policies, yes. um, first and foremost is that uh, one of um, the golden financial principles is that you're not going to um, spend beyond what you earn. Yes. Uh, right? So... Um, for an insurance policy, for example, you need to get an health insurance policy, and your yes. earnings um, is not that much. There are policies, uh, there are different insurance companies in Nigeria that offer different policies, yes. you know, and based on setting needs mm -hmm. and setting stratifications in the economy. So mm -hmm. for someone who is at the bottom of, of, uh, of the, the pyramid, yes. you know, you have an insurance policy that you can afford. And some policies, some insurers have even gone ahead to say, you can pay monthly, you can pay weekly, you can pay quarterly, you can pay half yearly, or you can pay your premiums on a yearly basis. So you would, you would uh, like for example, the company I represent, we have quite, uh, policies across board, so it depends on what you, you, you want. You know, nobody's going to tell you to go and take an insurance policy for all your earnings. That's, that's not wise. Mm. But uh, on the other hand, if you don't take an insurance policy and you have an, an emergency, you can lose a life mm -hmm. if there's no insurance cover. So if you have to go through a, a session or if you have to take some certain medication and your, your earnings cannot cover it, what do you yes. do? So insurance is a wise thing to do. Just putting aside some of your income to say when this thing would happen. Because the principle of insurance is that Everybody comes in a pool. Everybody mm -hmm. comes with his one one naira into a pool yes. of maybe yeah. 20 million people. Mm -hmm. okay. The probability that everybody will claim at the same time is not there. It's not there. The probability that everybody will claim in one insurance year before the insurance company takes another premium is also not there. 
So it's probability. It could happen to Mr. A today. It could happen to Mr. Exactly. B today. So it's just turn by turn, if you say that in the Nigerian Nigeria Limited. In, <laughs> in a Nigerian way. Okay, we've been talking to Mr. Daniel Owo, the agent manager of Aximanted, and we'll be going on a short break. Welcome back. This is still tea or coffee on your station, High Impact mm -hmm. Television. And we've been talking with Daniel Owo, the agency manager, Axel Mansard. We've been talking all about insurance. insurance. Um, there's one question I wanted to ask before we went on break, but I said, okay, let me keep it. The, why is it that a lot of people, when they hear that somebody is an, works in an insurance company, the fidgets, the fidgets. Why? And a lot, of, and most of the time, you see that people, some people are reluctant to work in an insurance company. Maybe they hate talking so much because we, they need to do a lot of convincing. Yes, of course, you, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> Before, it's not easy to just easy. sit someone down and try to convince the person. Immediately, you walk into the office and say, "From insurance company, I'm busy, please." Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, all of that. Um, um, I, I defy a bit on that. Okay. I, I defy a bit on that. that mm -hmm. yeah. No doubt you've got some history there to say that um, it's known that when an insurance, in fact, when someone, a company wants to recruit for sales agents, they always go to look for insurance salespeople okay. because of the tenacity and the doggedness in terms of closing out a sale. Yeah. So I, I, I give that to the sales agents and insurance um, um, industry. That's that's the way they are wired, which is okay. which has been working. Um, maybe um, there hasn't been a limit to that. That's why um, it's now a norm that once an insurance person knocks your door, you have to shut out the person. Mm -hmm. You know. But away from that, um, I mean, I don't see any reason why anybody would want to shy away from working with an insurance company. Okay. Well, growing up. Sorry to interrupt. Growing up. What has been your desire that when you grow up, you're going to be what? Okay, growing up, growing up for me, well, what I, what I thought I would practice is not what I'm doing now. Okay. <laughs> anyway. That happens and, a lot. Yeah, and, that happens a lot. And insurance was not top 20 on All that right. list of what I wanted to do. But okay, so as, how did you get to As you grow up, you begin to see the way things are turning out mm -hmm. in the society and the economy. And you know what the next big thing is. And I, I personally feel that insurance is one of the next big things in Nigeria. Okay. Right? Okay. Because um, um, insurers abroad, outside Nigeria, mm -hmm. actually own banks. The reverse is the case in Nigeria now, um, up until CBN came with the um, regulation. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because insurance companies are bigger. You okay. know, um, outside the country, um, you know, insurance is compulsory. Every step along the way, you mm -hmm. must take an insurance mm -hmm. policy because there is high level of enforcement. But in Nigeria, we don't have that sort of enforcement. Mm -hmm. I mean, the government is trying, Lagos State government is trying, putting out some things, making it um, um, compulsory, That's making true. some policies compulsory. Mm -hmm. But we're still not there. We're still far. Like I said earlier, in terms of um, GDP penetration, we're less than 5%. 0.5, yes. sorry. Not, that's 0 less than 1%. Yeah. 0 0.5. So the, opportunity, the opportunities are enormous you know, for the insurance. Um, so people who look at insurers as, or people, um, individuals who work in insurance companies as, is not, I mean, insurance companies pay, in terms of salaries, pay very well. <laughs> you know, so it, it used to be in the past where you have, an insurance agent comes to your office with a broken down shoe or something. <laughs> and all of that. That's but that's due not the to case. Walking around, yeah. <laughs> walking Just from one office to another. For example, I'm an insurance agent. Okay. And, and I'm not sure if I come to your office <laughs> to sell a policy, you would um, chase me out. You know, so things have changed. I've so moved when beyond. Why do you fall in love with the insurance? Why do I? When did when? you fall at in what love? Point at did what you point did you fall in love? Ah, at what point did I fall in love with insurance? Yes. Um, the core, the core, after underwriting in insurance, the next core part of the business is selling. Mm -hmm. okay. And selling is what I love to do. 
Okay. Right. So, um, uh, marrying my, my, um, my, my, what would passion. I say? My passion with, with what I'm doing makes the the job easier for me. So, and and I think that insurance is something that um, everyone should embrace. It gives you peace of mind. So. I, I never used to insure until I started working with an insurance company, except for regulatory required insurance policy like third party on, the, on my car, or maybe I need to travel and I need a travel insurance, which is a requirement to get a visa. You know, But now, the awareness, there's nothing I want to do that I can take an insurance policy that I don't do, no matter how much it is. Okay. So, so what, are, what are the challenges that insurance companies do face especially in this part of the world? Okay, so because you see, insurance is a game of numbers. The larger the pool, the better it is for the insurance company. The larger the people insuring, the larger the premiums we will get, the ability, the, um, the, which also gives us capacity. We give insurance capacity to pay claims when it occurs. Okay. You know, but you know, we don't have the numbers yet in Nigeria. We are over 100 and... 80 million people. Yes. And we just have little over 1% insured, individuals insured in Nigeria. No, you said 0.5. That's in GDP. Less than, okay. In population. In population. In population, in we population. have just a little over 1%. Yeah. Wow. So imagine if we have 50% of Nigerian individuals insured. I mean, insurance companies will be robust. Mm -hmm. So it takes me back to the earlier point at um, offline to say number one is awareness. Okay. Awareness on the benefits and the features and and all you get when you take out an insurance policy. Secondly is, I personally think that religion is also a problem with yeah. not allowing insurance thrive in Nigeria because we have, oh, we are extremely religious in Nigeria. Yes. So somebody will say, God is my insurer. Some people will say, insurance, the belief, the, the, the belief of insurance comes in the way of my, of my belief. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's also um, um, uh, a problem, or yes. that's also an hindrance that why insurance is not um, um, growing as much in Nigeria. Um, well, for me, I would take a step ahead of your question to say the outlook for insurance in Nigeria is fantastic. Okay. We're having big players in the past four years. We've had big players in the world come to Nigeria to invest. We have them, and I wouldn't want to mention yes. the names, but okay. we have, I know in the past three years, we've had Three major players. I mean, one of the global brands, number one global brands already in Nigeria. So once you have foreign investors come in that magnitude, you know that the industry is going to boom in the nearest um, uh, future. future. Okay. So how do you think people out there, for those that still do not understand the importance of insurance, how do you create the awareness and let them know that, see, this is, this insurance is important for you to have? Well, so first and foremost, um, I know one of the religions will say that a good man leaves an inheritance for... His children's children. His children's children. One of the ways that you can fulfill that belief for that religion is by taking an insurance policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I, am for example, put my son or my daughter in one of the leading schools in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and I'm paying the fees easily. What if I'm no more? Will the standard of education drop, or will the person drop out? I've seen situations where people have their children in very good schools in Lagos, and the breadwinner um, died, and for two years, they, they could go back to school. So what are you leaving for your um, um, children, you know? For. So for that's for an education plan or a life insurance. For your assets, you've invested so much. You are trying to put out, you are trying to go into real estate. You are trying to, some people will say to me that, oh, there's no need to buy insurance policy. What if there's a fire incident and fire brings down the building? What happens to the future of your children? So you still, in as much as you want to divest in that sort of, um, that aspect of the economy, you also still need to have an insurance policy to cover that asset. Otherwise, it takes you back to square one. Okay, talking about the assets, most sometimes I, why I believe that why some people are hesitant when it comes to insurance is because they believe that to get the money back, they go through rigorous process, mm -hmm. and eventually some will get so tired and just leave everything. So, as 
Has it changed? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, for the first year insurance company, and most insurance companies will pay claims. The regulators are doing a fantastic job. You can't be an insurance company and not pay claims. It's not possible in Nigeria as we speak because there are regulations. You can always, if the insurance company is not forthcoming, you can always write to the regulators and they would own them except you have other issues that are associated with the claim. So one of the reasons why people say, oh, I've filed in Maybe this because claim. because of some hidden... Fine prints or hidden yes, clauses. fine prints. So my like advice that. to people who want to take out insurance yes. is that, I mean, the most, we don't like to read in Nigeria. That's the problem. <laughs> the first thing you need to do with, before, taking an, before signing an agreement with an insurance company is that you read the draft policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at the policies. Look at the clauses. Anyone that doesn't favor you, call your insurers and let them explain or ensure that you're on the same page. Get it documented in an email or in a formal writing. So whenever a claim occurs, you know what is obtainable. The problem with Nigerians is that we take out insurance policies. We don't even read it. Then, and we don't know what is required of us of the policy. So when yes. it's time to make a claim, because you see the truth of insurance yeah. is not just picking up premiums yes. from, by the insurance. It's paying claims. That's when you know whether insurance works or not, mm -hmm. right? So if at the end of the day you are not on the same page with the insurer in terms of looking at the prints and looking at the clauses, when you need to make a claim, you don't even know the process to go. The document, of course, there are certain documentations that are required before every claim, claim is paid, mm -hmm. which is spelled out by the regulators. So if you haven't given out those documents and you haven't given out all the documents that are required, then the insurance company is not obliged to pay your claims. All right. Okay. Is it advisable to get a lawyer with you to go with a lawyer when you want to sign documents, insurance documents? You don't need, um, um, you may not necessarily need, um, but it depends on the magnitude of the policy okay. or the scope of the policy. You may not necessarily need a lawyer. So if you get a document, it shows that we don't want to read, we put all our, challenge, all our, all our responsibilities on the legal practitioners. Mm -hmm. If you pick out a document, mm -hmm. an insurance document, and you read through, and there's nothing, there's something you don't you understand. understand. <laughs> your first point of call, you can go online and read about it. Okay. If you are not cleared, call your insurer. Mm -hmm. If you are not cleared, then you can now start saying you are going to seek for legal, because it's, the insurance contract in the first place is, <laughs> is written by um, the legal practitioners. Okay. So it's nothing, nothing. If you pick an insurance policy, I mean a motor policy, you can understand. If you don't understand, go online. If you don't, if you are not cleared at that level, then you can speak to your insurance. So is insurance limited to a particular age bracket? Yes, um, as dictated by the law. So you cannot insurance. You know, an insurance um, an insurance is a contract mm -hmm. between two parties, and by law, you cannot go into any legal contract with anybody that is less than eighteen, 18. years. Okay. They are considered as minors. So we cannot go into an insurance contract with a minor, as stated by the law. Okay. All right, but can I do that? Can I help the 18, for example, if I have a child and I, I want to um, ensure maybe education, life, or whatever, I can do that for the child? Yes, so how it works with an education policy or a life policy is that you are not the beneficiary. The person who is taking out the policy is not the beneficiary of a policy. All right. So you as an adult or um, someone who, is, who can go into a contract, okay. you take the policy okay. in favor okay. of the minor. Okay. So the minor is your beneficiary. So if you want to take out the travel insurance, you'll be required to do that for, by the embassies. But it cannot be a standalone policy for okay. a minor. So an adult will take and the other one goes on that. Okay. The, um, mm -hmm. Because we're not going to get into a contract with the minor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are the major benefits of having or owning an insurance? The major benefit, like it's, it's all we've been saying all morning is, first and foremost, it gives you peace of mind. It gives you peace of mind. Whenever you have an issue, you know that, I mean, there is, I have something to fall back to. Okay. I'm not going to um, cry all the way. I'm not mm -hmm. going to, I mean, you have that um, covers. It's also a guarantee for your investment okay. to be sure that your investment you are, you, are, you are not, um, for those who, are take, who take business insurance, it helps business continuity. Mm -hmm. So in case something happens, a key man dies, you have a key man insurance to cover for the key man, or 
you know, um, um, a staff dies in the company. Mm -hmm. A staff needs to go to the hospital. There's health insurance. Mm -hmm. So somebody, for example, you needed to be on this set today and you had an, a, a medical emergency yeah. and you couldn't pay bills, you would be here. Yeah. If you have an insurance policy, you just go to the, um, to the um, hospital and show your card to say, I'm insured, I have health insurance, and the bills are picked. All you need to do is just ensure that the doctor sees you and sees you well. Okay. Uh, you mentioned something earlier about that in this part of the world, most people are only open to auto insurance, that is you insuring your cars. So how do you make people understand that other types of insurance are also important and necessary to have? Okay, so the insurance companies in Nigeria are doing a fantastic job. Okay. So if you drive on the streets of Lagos, you will see a banner or a billboard about different sort of insurance policies away from the third party insurance. Okay. I don't even think that the third party insurance is it's put out as much it. anymore because a lot of people know that. Okay. The policeman is going to stop you on the road and ask you for third party. Yes. <laughs> so even an uneducated person knows that you need to take a third party yes. insurance. insurance. But the other insurance policy, education policy, travel policy, there are travel policies that will take care of lost baggage, I mean, loss of baggage, flight delays, you know, emergency um, medical treatments abroad, and all of that. Okay. You know, for your phones, for your jewelry, your wristwatches, your movable items, you can take an insurance um, policy. I mean, for this studio, you can take an insurance policy, you know, for, I mean, there's almost nothing that you cannot insure. Okay, you talked about phone jewelry and all that. Say that again? You talk about phones, the jewelry, and all that. Yes. Okay, what if, if I insure my phone? So that means till I'm tired of it, I'll keep insuring every month or every year. Or there's a limit to how long I would insure that particular phone. So once the phone and is it in a good... Peri it's almost perishable item. Okay, so once the phone is in a good condition, mm -hmm. the value is ascertained, mm -hmm. you can insure, you'd be advised by the insurance company what the applicable premium is, which can be paid yearly or half yearly. Uh, most times it's yearly, okay. you know. Okay. On a yearly basis, assets depreciate. Yes. So depreciation is applied on assets on a yearly basis. So the amount you're insuring at year one may not be the same amount you insure at year two. Okay. Depreciation would have set it. Even with jewelry? Well, with jewelry, jewelry, yeah. that, that's a different case because that's um, gold and some jewelry yeah. appreciate. Yeah. You know, that's a different case. It can be taken case by case. It's not um, cast in stone in terms of... So it depends on what you're insuring. I don't know if that's... Okay, uh, you want me to... Uh, Sorry? Does that um, clear? Yes, but what yeah. I... <laughs> You're not clear on something, so yes. let me know what it is. Okay. I'm just... Okay, I have a phone. Okay. When I want to insure, are you going to tell me that this phone, you, can, you will insure for the next three years if nothing happens to it? After three years, do I continue to insure this? Or it stops? That's what I want to... Okay, so... Um, as long as the phone, like I said earlier, the phone is in, mm -hmm. the item is in good condition. Mm -hmm. We're not going to insure a dead phone. Mm -hmm. We're not going to insure something that is not, um, that doesn't have market value. Yeah, but are you going to tell me like in the beginning that this you will insure for three years? This will insure Insurance contract years. is on a yearly basis. Okay. So um, most, most of the contracts are for a year. So at the beginning of the year, if you come with an iPhone X, we all know what the value is. You tell us you bought it X amount. If it's not proportionate to what the market, prevailing market value is, we'll tell you that you've either overinsured or underinsured. We'll charge you a premium based on the market value. That's the replacement cost. So in year two, of course, the iPhone X will have depreciated. I will advise you on the new value. So we'll take it up on a yearly basis, on a yearly basis, till it keeps depreciating, depreciating. There is a level it will get to that it will no more be insurable. Okay. All right. So that is it, basically. Okay. okay. So when you insure, like you lose a property, when you lose your properties, when you lose properties, do insurance companies give you exactly what you've lost or something close to it? Okay. So when you've, you 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 suffer a loss, 
there are different things that are put into consideration before um, an insurance claim is paid, so, which is based on the contract that was signed. So I know for certain policies, if it's over a period, depreciation will set in, okay. would take out a measure of depreciation. There is something called the standard excess clause on insurance policies, an excess amount is a global practice that will be taken out from the claim. So those are the two that I know. Maybe there's, there may be some other penalties, you mm -hmm. know, that would um, be included in the claim amount. But if you do everything right, if you understand your contract properly, at the end of the day, you should be smiling to the bank. Okay, so one more question. How do you correct the mentality? One more question. What if I want to have my question? <laughs> Time is not on our side. So. <laughs> How do you correct the mentality of people saying insurance is a scam? Because you mentioned that earlier too, that most yes. people think insurance is a scam and they don't want to venture into it. So how do you correct that mindset? Okay, so if the right education is put out there, we would all be on the same page. Okay. Most importantly, if claims are being paid seamlessly in industry in Nigeria, which I know a lot of insurance companies are doing, yeah. the belief and the trust will be there. You don't need to speak much. Okay. Once they can see that my friend had, a accident, had an accident mm -hmm. and the insurance company came through for him mm -hmm. and paid him without stories, insurance without stories, of course, the person too will be encouraged. So, yes. so it has a multiplier effect. Once okay. insurance companies do the right thing, which I know quite a number of insurance companies are already doing, mm -hmm. so that, right. that takes care of that. Okay. Like she said, actually, it's time for us to wrap. But is there anything you want to tell the people as well to know that insurance is a necessity? Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to tell people? Well, on the final note, I'll just say that insurance is... Um, um, an important aspect of life that um, we should consider, you know, for all for all um, facets of our lives. So for, okay. for health, for assets, for life insurance, for company insurance, and um, the likes. Um, it gives you peace of mind. All right. And <laughs> I said last but um, a question just came in now from those watching, from one of the people watching at home. Okay. The difference between third party and premium. What's the difference? Third party and premium. Yes. Okay, so in, um, um, in the lowest form of explanation I can give yes. for what is a premium is the amount you pay to the insurance company okay. yes. to get the policy. So premium is another word for payment. Okay, okay. what about comprehensive? Okay, so third I guess party. the person was trying to ask yes. what the difference is between, between comprehensive, comprehensive, comprehensive and third party. And third party. Okay. Yes. okay, so third party is just an insurance cover that protects only third party, just like okay. it says. Okay. So if you are, if you eat another, a third party's car, yes. the insurance company would indemnify the third party to a certain amount as stated in the policy. Okay. But a comprehensive insurance on the other end has a full cover. It covers the insured and the third party. Okay. It covers for fire, covers for theft, Okay. Covers for accidental damage okay. and some other. I wanted to put it in a scenario. In a what? In a, for a clearer picture. I wanted okay. to put it in a, in a scenario, please. Okay, so for example, mm -hmm. um, um, let's take the fire incidents that happened some weeks back in Lagos okay. on yes. the Tedela Bridge. So those who have just third party insurance mm -hmm. may would not be covered. Okay. All right. The policy is only third party insurance. Okay. It is not because that's not a third party incident. All right. That happened. That that's a loss to so, the insured. Yes, oh. to the insured. Right. So, but those who have compressive insurance mm -hmm. would have fire, would have theft. Okay. So they are covered. Even their insurance company may even cover as far as much as their personal items that were lost in the car. In the car. Okay. Right. And if somebody suffered an injury in the car, your insurance company policy can also cover as cover much. That. Oh, okay. You know. So those who are just third party, not. Uh, speak it down on them, I mean, may have to bear the loss themselves. Oh, but, yeah. you know, if you have a comprehensive insurance, you see that there's a situation, you just walk out. So for an individual who has his phones, his bags, and everything in short, all you need to do is just save your life. Just walk out of the car. Right. And watch the car burn. You don't need to get involved. Yeah, the insurance okay. company is going to pick up. Covered. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so you've heard it all. You make sure you get an insurance for your health, for your car. Just... Have peace of mind and rest of mind. Still to your coffee on high impact television. We've been talking to Mr. Daniel Owo, the agent.
manager of Aksamanta. My name is Muraola Pokwala, and with me, yes, it's Ronke Ashiru. Thank and you, it's Daniel, going to be a wrap for the day. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for coming to wrap. Bye.